Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My name is Chris Collier. I'm your host of the Conquer with Chris, the podcast you don't want to miss. Today we have a special and great guest in Franco Schumpert. Welcome to the show, Franco. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm so honored and humble uh, for the invite. Well, let's get into your story. Let, let the people know where you're from and, and uh, where, where you live and kind of what you do nowadays. Okay, wonderful. I'm from Gary, Indiana. <laughs> I'm a third generation of PK, um, three wonderful grown children. I'm a pastor, I'm an author, I'm a prophetess, I'm a psalmist, I'm an entrepreneur, I have several businesses, um, and also I'm a Georgia Board certified therapist. Um, I love uh, helping people, that's always been the thing that keeps me motivated, keeps me going, and gives me excitement, I tell you, to be able to uh, be a, of help or assistance or someone in any, you know, manner possible. That's great. And currently, you reside in the Atlanta metro area? I'm in the Atlanta metro area, so if you're ever in Stockbridge, Georgia, our local assembly is generally loca located there. It's uh, 3910 North Henry Boulevard, uh, Stockbridge, Georgia, 30281, and we're in the Youth Center. We are currently now, though, on Facebook Live and Instagram, and we have our services at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Check us out. We are a ministry that, are on, that is on top and going higher. That's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So let's get, you weren't always a pastor. You weren't always an entrepreneur. You weren't always all the things you do. Let, let's go back a little bit and have, uh, go back and, uh, because I really believe the struggle of the entrepreneur, the struggle of the minister, uh, the struggle of everyone mm -hmm. is real. And uh, it needs to be told because some of these people think that they're owed something. They think that success just comes, right? But you have to work. Um, there's a grind to it. There's a method. You have to be processed. So let's hear a little bit about your story, if we could. Well, a story has, uh, you know, been birthed out of challenge, out of having to endure and stay consistent through the rough times. Um, that's how I really gained a closer relationship with the Lord, uh, you know, through the struggle. A lot of times people have had these super duper uh, testimonies. I, I found him in the fire. I found him in the valley, uh, going through being homeless, going through divorce, uh, you know, having to lose everything, homes, cars, even ministry buildings and everything that goes in it. I've lost a lot, but I, I, I feel like David, oh, glory to God, when he said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So that kept me going. My faith kept me going because I knew that these were you know, trials and temptations and in our lives. The Bible tells us we will have them, but be of good cheer to God that's overcome the world. So I held on to the word. Uh, that was all I had sometimes was just the word uh, to hold on to. And it um, brought us out. Thank God it, it wasn't easy. We had to uh, build again and uh, relay foundation, go out and, and get our hustle on. We had to uh, heal. Oh, let's talk about that. My God, let's heal um, and and be forgiving uh, to the to the people that may have wounded us along the way while going through the process, or that may have helped to cause the process. Um, had to deal with uh, rejection and all kinds of things for some reason or another. When you're going through trials, the people that love you seem to reject you the most. Um, so having to allow God to heal my heart and. To, to love again and to forgive and deal with rejection and the grief that comes with losing that fear. And if I do this again, will I lose again? It was a lot of things uh, that come with trials, but they make us, you know, oil is crushed. Uh, the best oil is, is, is crushed. It's crushed hard. That cold compress oil, you know, when you go to the store, Chris, that cold compressed olive oil costs more than the regular oil. And we ask God for anointings. We ask God for power and authority. We want to walk in miracles. We want to be a different kind of therapist. We want to be the multimillionaire, but we have to be cold compressed, cold life uh, situations come in our lives to press the oil, the good thing out of us. So I have absolutely no anger, no resentment uh, from what I've been through. I've learned a lot. I'm liking me. I mean, loving me. You know, you could, oh, Jesus, I'm liking and loving me right now. 
uh, the things that God is doing for me. There's a level of liberty and freedom that I never experienced. It took me 56 years to get here, and I'm grateful for everything that I had to walk through to get here. So to God be the glory. Yes, life is not always easy, but it is worth it if you stay consistent. One of my main um, cliches is consistency is the key to any breakthrough, and I've learned that walking through the crazy and the not so crazy. Well, let's, yeah. let, let, let's, let's stay there for a minute. Cause like what I've realized and, and it's just what I've realized is that when you're, you're bitter and, and broken and you hold on to that, it creates disease in people's oh, lives. Absolutely. And disease. not only that, but the worst thing God could give you is an anointing a calling a gifting and you're still walking in that hurt <laughs> and, walking in that, and you create more havoc. Look at, mm. we, have, we used to have a saying and it's so true. Uh, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. Broke people, break people, <laughs> and, and whole people, heal people. Yeah. Uh, so tell people why it's important. Um, explain to them, because you probably can do better than I can, how the healing process not only helps you, but it helps the people that you end up impacting. Well, and that's such an amazing question, Chris, because be it that I've always wanted to help, even as a child, I wanted to help people. Uh, as I begin to grow and uh, go through challenges because, you know, they're growing pains and they're called pains for a reason. They hurt. Uh, I remember the day that the Holy Spirit said to me, until you allow me to break that yoke in your life, I will not give you the power or the authority to break yokes, broke yokes in others. And he knew how important it was to me to help. I, I just feel uh, there's a high that I can't even explain when it comes to helping people, I feel elated. I believe God is pleased with my life. I believe that's what he created me to do. So I feel fulfilled means I feel full, full of life, full of joy, full of energy when um, I help people. So that was one of the major things. I'll never forget that. And as he shared that to me, I began to yield. And it took years, you know, a lot of stuff. You know, people want a quick fix. And it didn't take a microwave opportunity for you to gain the pain, the hurt, the fears, the frustration that you walk through. So if it didn't take a microwave situation to gain it all, why do we think it's going to take a microwave situation to come out of it? We have to trust God um, to know that he has us. And in that painful process, Chris, that's another area where I found him. We quote a lot of scriptures and a lot of things, but do we actually know what they mean? Are they really alive and well to us? Have they really been effective in our lives? Or are you just saying what you heard mama and them or grandmama or uncle Bubba and them saying, are you really in a relationship with God and with people that when God brings you to yourself, your stinky stuff. You know, that thing that you know is wrong. You know, you know your stuff stink more than anybody else. Come on, you can, you know when it's not right. When God mm -hmm. uses the word or people, because he will use people, that Jonathan and David situation, to bring you to you, are you receptive? Are you in denial? Are you saying, God, mm, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And when you can receive that, because you cannot get rid of, Chris, what you don't own. I can't give you my car title if I don't own my car, right? So I had to own it according to First John. He said, if you confess your sins, that's number one, owning it. He's faithful and just to forgive your son, sins. That's number two, because you're not forgiven until you first forgive, so release everybody. Then number three, and then I'll cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So the cleansing begins at that third part of it. Allow him to do what he needs to you so God can get most glory out of you. There's so much in you that you've not even tapped into, but you must get you out of the way and become one with God because God and the word are synonymous. Become more like him so that he can see him in you and he can trust you to be of a help or service to others. That's so key. I, I was listening to a, someone preach just recently and he said the only thing God listens to is his word. No. At first, I was offended by it. I'm like, wait, what about the sinner's prayer? But the sinner's prayer has God's word the in word. it. Come on. <laughs> so the only thing God listens to, look, at people say, well, that's arrogant. I said, no, it's not arrogant because God has the right and the obligation to put his word first. Because yes. he said, if my word fails, all heaven and earth shall pass away. Uh, so on. at the end of the day is, watch this, is in going to the blessing scenario that you said, do you, do you want a, a quick blessing or a microwave? You know, you got microwave hurt. Look at, 
an elephant takes two years for it to birth a baby. Come on. But when that baby's born, it makes a thud on the earth that's fell. Yes, yes. You're not going to mess with no elephant. Come on, somebody. It might not be the king of the jungle, but every footstep it takes is going to leave an imprint, and it changes the scenery where it goes. Oh, that's good. You want a coleslaw blessing that takes a couple minutes to make, or do you Uh want an elephant blessing? Some of you are going through a situation, and I call it the process. you Mm -hmm. got to become addicted to the process, and no matter how long or how short your process is. Mm Mm-hmm. And sometimes we control the time, but I'll get back to that in a minute. Mm-hmm. The process is dependent on how big of a blessing you're going to get. One. Come on. And how resistant you are to the process. The mm-hmm. children of Israel travel 40 years in something that could take about half a week. Come on. But they you chose know. to stay in the wilderness. Yes. yes. They chose. I don't want to take them, but they couldn't handle the blessings come on come on you know we have to get in a position and i made up my mind that i didn't want to give god nothing that didn't cost me something because as we sacrifice uh we're we're saying that this flesh is now not preeminent it's not first We're saying, I'm making you Lord of my life. Lord, I give you full control, full reign, so that my flesh won't war with the spirit of God, that my flesh, when he's wanting to use me, I can move freely. I can go. I can hear clearly. My vision is more keen and not distorted because unforgiveness and bitterness, resentment, fears, and strife distort vision. And without vision, people perish. You know, uh, we want to be people who have clear vision so that when God says, I need you to move, you can move just like that without questioning. We want to be people who have pure hearts. As David said, create in me a clean heart, God, and renew a right spirit within me so that we can move with the right spirit. We want to have joy because the joy of the Lord strengthens us. So we can't have all these negative things and expect God's perfect will to permeate through us because light and darkness can't dwell in the same temple. You know, and he told us to let your light shine before men so they can see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. So this is our season where we need to be light shiners. We need, you know, even the bugs, you know, attracted to the light. You know, it's dark. You turn that flip on on the back porch. Even the bugs migrate to the light. But mm-hmm. after a while, they can't stay there because the light is so hot. Come on, somebody. That it's, it, it burns them off. So this is the deal. Is your light shining so bright that anything that tries to attract, attract or attach itself uh, to you that's not of God falls off? You know, uh, glory to God. You know, we always use the thing with sometimes when we're witnessing, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Mm. I think as Christians, we need to apply it to our lives, right? Come on, say if that. He, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Jesus, so we, Jesus, Jesus. Because like, we, oh, he's Lord. And some people, I, I don't know why I'm going here, but oh, well, some people are sexually agnostic. Uh-huh. They don't believe there's God when it comes to sex. Mm. If he's Lord of your sex life, he's Come not on. Come on, say that. He's not Lord say of that. your money. He's not Lord of all. If Come he's on. not Lord of, of, of your mouth, he's not, mm. Lord. he's not Lord of your attitude. He's not Lord at all. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So you say, well, well how, do I, how do I, you know, and, and if you get caught, it's okay. If you get caught, not him not being Lord, you have to fix that. And you fix that just the way uh, Franco was saying. Mm-hmm. You do that by renewing your mind, filling it with yes. the word of God. Yes. Complying with his desire for you. I mean, um, there's nothing wrong with giving into the Lord. Come on. Come on. He's the best thing to get into. Um, one thing I do have uh, that the Lord has blessed me with is a book called Loving You Was Killing Me. And in this book, it's actually uh, Chris, a self-help guide to freedom. But we didn't stop there what we did at the end of each chapter, because we talk about forgiveness, we talk about perversion, we talk about addictions, we talk about fear and rejection, we talk about all kind grief and guilt. These are things that people deal with on a day-to-day basis, but you know, who's there to assist them? You know, because people don't like the state that they're in, they don't wanna be that way, but who's there to assist them with information and tools that will help them come out of that state? Well, that's what we did. And with this book, it's under my name, Franco Shumpert M.A. Uh, It's on Amazon and Kindle. You can purchase it. 
Uh, it's $14.99, Amazon, Kindle, $9.99. And don't just stop at you. Let's get these books out there because people are bleeding. At the end of each chapter, Chris, we offer a prayer to get you delivered. And then we offer a uh, life work. Because, you know, uh, casting spirits or demonic forces out of you is not the hard part. You can do that in the instant. It's keeping them out that the work comes in. And a lot of times people don't share with people after deliverance services or therapeutic services how to keep stuff out. So we pray at the end of each chapter, but we also give you life work with your questions and different things that we advise you to do. So we have a holistic standpoint, but then we also have a therapeutic standpoint that you can couple together and use and it's it's an easy reader and um i'm sure it will bless you you know what's been amazing to me chris is the men are enjoying this book i'm getting more uh uh what is it uh, <laughs> uh say it again testimonials testimonials and great feedback from the men they were like you don't know we deal with unforgiveness we deal with rejection um this was good i was like well thank god uh, I, I wrote it with everyone in mind, but I was so elated because it was a sweet surprise to hear that the men were blessed by it. I was like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, when, when a man walks into a room, um, they usually they think one of three things. Why is everyone looking at me in a negative way? Why is everyone mm -hmm. looking at me in a positive way? Uh -huh. and, or they, they, they have the total, um, total uh, the, the third thought, which is everyone's looking at me and laughing at me. Okay. They feel the wow. Before they walk in the room. Uh huh. That's uh -huh. how guys feel. Like, oh yeah, everyone's looking at me. I'm the man. Or everyone's looking at me. Why? What do I have yeah. a sticker on my back? Kick me, you know, or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. Or mm -hmm. everyone's laughing because I'm the butt of everyone's jokes. Wow. So that's how a man walks into a room. But mm -hmm. I learned something recently. I've started practicing it. And I want to give this to people. We okay. need to practice reverse paranoia. Ah. Everyone's out to help me. Uh huh. <laughs> Even if it's not true, everyone's you need. We need to have the thought. Everyone's out to help me. Everyone's uh -huh. out to bless me. Everyone is out mm -hmm. to support me. Mm -hmm. So, because what you think about, you actually draw closer to yourself. Absolutely, <laughs> and absolutely. Because as to, a man think it, so is he. And it's exactly. so is he. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, how can people find you? You can find me on uh, Facebook under my name, Franco Shumpert. Um, or you can go to Instagram. I'm under Franco Shumper. Just putting Franco in uh, pretty much will pull me up. Uh, you'll see my face mostly with the book. And I want to put that close to you. Loving you was killing me. Again, for those of you that need a tool, a therapeutic, holistic tool to help your life become better. Um, I have one read. So you'll be able to see me on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, you can find me under That's my cool. name. Yes, that is wonderful. Yeah. You have a favorite quote you'd like to share? Um, well, <laughs> one of my favorite quotes, quotes that people know me about by is on top and going higher. They call me, How you doing? I'm on top and going higher. And that's been my mantra, my quote for what 20, 20 years. A lot of times people say, or oh, more, we don't use it. I'll let you borrow it. You can. Um, <laughs> I don't have a challenge with it, but that keeps me in a place of accountability. And it keeps me pushing forward to know that, we, you know, we have to come up hither. You know, we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, you know. So we're seated. Come on, heavenly places, it should be high. Come on, somebody. Even in the heavenly regions of our mind, you know, uh, our thought process should be thinking on things that are above. That's, that's what the Bible tells us. Whatsoever is good, lovely, just, honest, uh, you know, good report, that be any virtue, be any praise. Think on these things. So, you know, keeping our minds renewed, keeping our minds transformed, keeping our minds filled with the, uh, covered with the helmet of salvation, keeping the clutter out, keeping our minds, setting our affections on things that are above. So we say on top and going higher. Yeah. On top and going higher. Yes, well, sir. I want to thank my guest, uh, Franco Schumpert, uh, for being on today. And uh, what a wonderful time we had. Um, yes. Please like, subscribe, and share. And um, if you're on YouTube, uh, hit the notification bell so you get notifications when the new video comes out. Thank yes. you so much. Have a great day.